Hey, how's it going? So I uh, did a video about why I like System76 and Pop! OS, and I wanted to do kind of like a follow-up video of why I don't like Pop! OS. Not exactly System76 because, you know, I, lo I love what System76 did with the, the CUDA repo. Um, and by the way, I didn't mention this in the last video, you can add that CUDA repo to Ubuntu itself. So it's really cool they add the backwards compatibility so that you know, everything works on vanilla Ubuntu as well. Uh, you can add the, the System76 NVIDIA drivers to vanilla Ubuntu. You can add uh, the CUDA repo. You can add the TensorFlow repo. So that's awesome time saving. And you can use it on Ubuntu or Pop! OS. So you can even add their, um, their whole entire theme to Ubuntu, vanilla Ubuntu, which basically makes it, in my opinion, like Pop! OS, except you are missing a, key, a few key things, which is what I want to mention now. Uh, those things that you're missing are uh, the the similarities to Ubuntu and Pop OS. They they diverge right from the start of the operating system. So when um, Ubuntu boots, it uses uh, Grub and a few other things, and that's like the traditional thing that most every other um, person using Ubuntu is, is uh, accustomed to. Now, where Pop! OS diverges, they use System D boot. And it's not that it's bad, it's, it's good, it's awesome, it's fast. Um, it's just that it has a lot of differences. So if you're trying to solve problems, it's going to be hard to solve those problems because tools like uh, PPA colon YANN Ubuntu slash boot repair, that PPA, Yan Ubuntu Boot Repair, whatever it's called. Um, you can't use that tool because that tool is uh, pretty much for grub. Um, Pop! OS, they really need to have a tool that's going to be able to automatically repair um, those system D boot problems because I ran into it time, time and time again. And um, like I, I was just doing updates and all of a sudden because I had a Windows drive, maybe it wasn't configured the exact way that system D boot was expecting it to be. Um, and also their boot scripts. Um, it would uh, essentially make it so I can't boot into Pop! OS and I'd have to spend a whole lot of time either repairing that or whatever. So I mean that's one reason I think everybody should be aware of and uh, just wanted to put that out there kind of like a uh, an announcement you know <laughs> service announcement Pop! OS boot is uh, a little uh, finagly for uh, people who don't want to spend a lot of time fixing boot problems. Now I have uh, two NVMe drives, they're all on uh, UEFI, and yeah, and I, I had it set up perfectly for a while and I could push, you know, F12, get into one or the other, whatever one I wanted to. And then I, I also edited the, the UEFI uh, boot uh, parameters so that I had both the Windows drive and the Pop! OS drive in there too, but I mean, that kind of takes away the advantage of speed from the system D boot uh, in the first place. So I think that, you know, if Pop! OS wants to be successful, um, they're doing a great job, but I think that's one area that they could improve upon. And that's one thing that everybody else should be aware of and watch out for if you want to have just something that works perfectly out of the box. Now, with that said, I have switched everything from Pop! OS to Ubuntu again. And that took a while, but thankfully, I did something called using a separate partition for your home uh, home folder. So it was pretty easy to do. Uh, just did a reinstall. Of course, I backed up everything before I did, just in case anything goes wrong. But then just did a re reinstall. Uh, you know, said in the Ubuntu installer, said this is where my home folder is. Don't format. Don't don't check that check mark that says format. But format everything else. I think I, I had to format everything else except for, uh, what was it, the, the EFI uh, partition itself, the one that's for booting. So I had to format everything besides that. So the, the root, I put my boot and my root folder uh, partitions on, on, se on se se folders on separate partitions. So um, yeah, so I switched, uh, I switched away from that, but I'm still pretty much using all the goodness from System76. Pop! OS operating system. So uh, I still love it. I still appreciate the, the work that they did. 
And um, if you go actually go to their um, GitHub, they say that managing different CUDA versions is a nightmare. And if you ever have to work with a game or TensorFlow or anything like that, it's a nightmare. So they have uh, a big rundown of how to switch CUDA versions, use, have uh, multiple CUDA versions installed concurrently, and then use update alternatives to switch CUDA versions. So it's, it's awesome. They have uh, an example of two running simultaneously. And I mean, there's other examples where I mean, you can see the difference of how important this is because there's big, long articles from uh, places like Puget Systems where they're talking about uh, how do you install CUDA, TensorFlow, all the you know scientific computing stuff. And it, it's like 20, 30 steps sometimes. I mean, it can get kind of complicated, especially if you want to have multiple versions for different things. So the work that they're doing here is very important. I'm, I'm very uh, happy that they're you know, pushing that upstream so that, you know, everybody can take advantage of it. So that's really cool. And uh, yeah, just wanted to say that kind of as like a follow up. All right. Have a good one.